Adam, question always comes up and I guess some people would say that, you know, engineers and architects do make a good wage when they get out, but it's not as much as some other professions. Why do you think that, I guess, engineers and architects have to go through that long process before they actually get to that good uh, earnings? Yeah. Well, oh, this is a big question. Bottom line is society does not value engineers the way it values other professions, period. I have evidence for this. Uh, a guy called Dr. Peter Simmons, who's an American British uh, engineer, he's one of the top 10 engineers in the world. He's been on the podcast twice, so I know him personally. He he literally wrote the book on how to design tall, super tall, mega tall buildings. There's a book in the Ashray Library on this, written by him in its second edition. He is a world authority on this, right? He's in the top 10 it, by any measure. If he was a lawyer or a doctor, he would be earning seven figures. I can tell you, Peter does not earn seven figures and very few engineers do. Society does not value his skills. But, right, so why is that? Now, he should be valued the same. To be an engineer, you've got to do a four-year degree that you can't fake or half ass. right? You then have to do four years, five years of training to be licensed. Lawyers, similar, you have to go to... Wait, wait, what about architects? Four years, yeah. sometimes five, sometimes more, and then hold on. Architects actually have to take more tests than any other profession put together, 24 hours of them, over five years of 5,000 plus hours. Let's not forget that. And then they'll make the least out of all of those. Yeah. There, so. Well, take architects. The average wage for an architect in the UK, I looked this up the other day, is about 35,000 pounds. What's that? It's about, about 40, 52. 45 grand US, huh. right? So in architect- not now, now, now we have to pay a lot more. Yeah. Since but in architecture, the money goes to the architects. It goes to the thin end of the tail, right? If there's a bell curve, it's at the end, yep. right? Most people, so anyone who goes into architecture, you go, you got to want to do that. If you've done a four year degree and then another degree and then the training, and then you start complaining you're only earning 45 grand a year, you know what? You're a moron. You should have looked that up before you chose to do that. Anyway, long story short, why architects and engineers paid low? because they let people do it to them. You don't get lawyers or doctors putting their services out for lowest bid. You ever gone to a lawyer? The lawyers I use go, hey dude, this is my rate, pay me a retainer or this conversation is finishing real soon, right? By, yeah, by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> right. When I was a property developer, if I picked the phone up to the lawyer we used to use in the UK, like even for five or 10 minutes, just to ask one question, I get an invoice literally the week after it would be uh, half an hour billing pleasantries and answer question, blah, blah, blah. I was getting billed for pleasantries. Hey, Adam, how are you? How's things, right? Any engineers get that? No. No. <laughs> so no, we you know what? If you're an engineer and architect and you come in and complain about your salary, you did not do your due diligence before you started that degree. Shame on you, right? And also, society doesn't value these professions. You got to get over it and find a way to to up your money. And the way you do, do that, you think that that's why? Do you think that's why we have a like you know like right now like we're everybody's trying to find very qualified architects, very qualified engineers. I mean, it's like a shortage. I mean, do you do you think that that was one of the reasons that caused this? I don't even know what caused the shortage. I mean, I oh, so what caused the shortage was uh, baby boomers retiring on mass accelerated by COVID. So we are moving into a period now where skill shortages are gonna be extreme. And if you cannot put your prices up now and stop doing competitive bids, then you should just get out. It's over. This has never been a time, better time now than to raise your rates and be selective. Engineers and architects are terrible at one word. They cannot say the word no. No, I'm not going to bid. No, I'm not going to do that. Right? Do you know who can do that? Star architects. You ever work with a star architect? I did one job in London with a star architect. Just to get in a room with this dude, who shall be nameless, who died recently. Um, you had to, like, go on a wait list. I'm the freaking client. I got to go on a wait list just to be in the mere presence of him. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm dealing with these associates and partners. Right? Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting world we live in right now. And uh and you know that, that word lost leader, 
you know, and basically like doing something to basically lose money to do something else. Like I, I always tell people now it's like, know your value, you know? And, uh, you know, I always, one of my you know cliches is I'm always like, you know, don't chase a job, chase a relationship, build a relationship, become friends with people. So when people understand your value and what you do, and then basically how you and your team will, you can be called anytime because you actually, you treat them like they're family. And you know, that's what I do. Right. It's just like, so I, I don't think, I think, I, I think, like I said, race to the bottom, low fees. I, I, I think you have to be very selective and I'm not saying be selective like that. I'm just basically yeah. saying that know your value, know what you bring. And, and you're exactly right. I, uh, any future engineer or architect who's out there, it's just like, whenever I try to mentor someone, always know your value, know what you bring yeah. and do all the research before you get into the profession, because you make your future in college. You make your connections in college or as a tradesperson, you know, but you got to put the due diligence in and you, and you got to do this research. And I'm just so happy that we actually have a forum that we can talk about this because I believe that you state a problem and then basically figure out how to come up with a solution. Yeah. So there are prerequisites to earning good money. Yeah. Be good at your job. I mean, real good. Don't just half ass it, right? Be consistent and learn to say no. No, well, I'm not good at Last thing I was going to say is discount. brand yourself and brand your company. Yep. Always do the best you can because, remember, you're always selling yourself and you're always selling the company you work for. And I always tell people when you're in front of a client, they're basically – you got the big gorilla behind you of whatever company you work for, but they're buying you. They're not just buying the company. They're buying you. Yep. So act like you have ownership. Yep. Act like you have accountability. Believe in your responsibility and you will never not be successful because they they want to basically they want to buy something from someone they trust yeah. and they believe in because you help them feel good at night. So, so I'm going to wrap this up with one thought. There is one thing you can do tomorrow to change your life with this. Say no. Don't <laughs> bid every job that comes across your desk. Be selective. If you can't do it in a market of scarcity of good people that we're in now, you're never going to do it. Stop. Just say, just say no is the lesson, right? So, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm going to know that. No. 